Hey y'all, I'm Drake and this is Drake Makes Art. So most of the visual arts, with a few exceptions like sculpture, are two-dimensional media. You know, photography, painting, film, all of these are about taking three-dimensional objects and representing them in a two-dimensional image. Well, that presents a problem. How do you take something that has three dimensions and convincingly represent it as having three dimensions in a medium that only has two dimensions. Well, that's where the principle of form comes in. So in the last video, we talked about how light is the thing that allows us to see. You know, light hits an object, bounces off of it, and that light reaches our eyes, and that's how we're able to see the object. Well, when light strikes a surface, its angle of reflection is equal to its angle of incidence, which is just a fancy technical way of saying that its outgoing angle is equal to its incoming angle. So what does this mean for us as artists? Well, when light strikes a three-dimensional surface that isn't entirely flat, some of the light bounces directly into our eyes, but then some of the light also bounces off and is just lost, like it doesn't make it to our eyes. The amount of light that is lost is relative to a number of different factors, including the angle of the light source and the distance between the surface and your eye. Let's look at a practical example. This cylinder is lit by a light source above and slightly to the left. If we take a vertical and horizontal cross-section of this image, we can model how the light bounces off of it. You'll notice that the areas where the most light is bouncing to the camera are the areas that appear the brightest, while the areas where the light is bounced away and lost appear darker. If we apply a false color map to the object, the effect becomes more obvious. The process of creating this transition from light to shadow is called shading. Here's a lineup of some common solid shapes, all lit by a single point above and to the left. These shapes are a prism, a cone, a cube, a sphere, a pyramid, and a cylinder. And you can think of them as the primary shapes. If primary colors are the colors used to create all the other colors, then these primary shapes are the shapes used to create all the other shapes. Even organic shapes can be broken down into these primaries, which means that knowing how to shade them properly is imperative to creating convincing three-dimensional images in two-dimensional space. Though some artists have chosen to focus on creating illusions through unconventional shading techniques. So, this principle of form is something that you can really only master by practice. You know, drawing these primary shapes, um, linking several primary shapes together to create more complex shapes, experimenting with the placement of different light sources. These are the kinds of exercises that are going to help you become a better artist. And if you can do the reverse, you know, if you can take an image or an object and break it down into its primary shapes and figure out where it's lit, then you'll have a leg up when it comes time to compose your own images, you know. So I would encourage you to look at images and practice breaking them down into their simplest shapes and figuring out where their lighting is. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something about form and shading and why they work the way they do. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to check out my other videos on the fundamentals of visual art and subscribe if you like this kind of content. You know, if, if you're looking for content on why art works the way it does, as well as just exploring the creative process of creating art pieces, then uh, I hope you'll give this video a like and subscribe to this channel. Um, thanks again for watching, and I hope I'll see you next time when we make something new. Bye.